To a stone carver, this coarse block holds within it a new form waiting to be revealed. To the naked eye, it is solid, but to science, it is a swirling, seemingly chaotic mass of tightly woven energy. Both versions of reality are true, and both require highly trained minds, skilled hands, and the proper tools and workspace to bring their subjects to light. Whether the research seeks to unravel the origins of the universe, targets the internal structure of matter, or examines the genetics of disease, each subject will only reveal its true form to the quickest of minds with the sharpest of tools. In research facilities across Canada, and now in international centers around the globe, the Canada Foundation for Innovation is providing access to the world-class research space and equipment that is the nexus of innovation. Throughout history, philosophers and scientists have contemplated the origins of the universe posing ever more complex questions. How are stars and galaxies formed? What can mapping the universe tell us of its origins? Are there other solar systems similar to ours, capable of supporting life? Radio astronomers seeking answers to these and other questions come to the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope in Hilo, Hawaii. From its perch high atop an ancient volcano, the radio telescope scans the skies, studying the cold material of space, such as gas and the dust clouds between stars. It can detect the faint heat glow of grains of interstellar dust trillions of miles from Earth. The International Facility uses a special camera-like device called SCUBA, which stands for Submillimeter Common User Bolometer Array. The device is internationally recognized as the most powerful imaging system of its kind. But, as powerful as SCUBA is, its replacement, SCUBA 2, is designed to produce far more detailed images and be a thousand times faster than its predecessor. Instead of showing the universe the way it is now, the way that stars are and the way that planets look now, it looks deep into where stars are forming, where planets are forming and shows us how they form. At these much longer wavelengths, normal telescopes don't work. They don't show us anything. The processes of star formation and planet formation are hidden, and you must observe those at much longer wavelengths to see anything. SCUBA 2 will be by far the best instrument to see these much longer wavelengths where creation is happening. SCUBA 2 will scan vast areas of the sky with unprecedented speed and detail. The new technology will permit radio astronomers to gather more information in one night than can currently be done in three years of observation. SCUBA 2 will revolutionize submillimeter astronomy. It will be the best submillimeter camera in the world, operating on the best submillimeter telescope in the world at the very best observing site in the world. The challenge of designing and building this instrument requires that we pool the talents of scientific and technical experts from around the globe. This international collaboration is an essential aspect of big science in the 21st century, and it's only possible with the support of organizations like the CFI. By participating in international long-term research projects like those conducted using SCUBA 2, Canada maintains and enhances its stature as a country actively engaged at the frontier of radio astronomy opening an ever-expanding window to a universe of new knowledge. Eighty percent of the world's seabed has never been explored in detail. In one corner of the ocean universe, our ability to gather information is about to change, thanks to an innovative international undersea network called Neptune. Under the leadership of the University of Victoria, a 3,000-kilometer network of powered fiber-optic cables will soon surround and cross 
the smallest of the dozen major plates that make up the planet's surface, the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate. Unlike research projects conducted by surface vessels, Neptune can provide continuous data and images from deep sea observatories, each hosting an array of instruments. Real-time data and video will allow scientists, students, and the general public to gain a new understanding of processes in plate tectonics, earthquakes, and tsunamis, the complex life cycles of marine life, and their response to climate change. The expanding data bank will support research, education, and the formulation of public policy. Our project Neptune is truly going to revolutionize the Earth sciences. It will bring power and the internet to large areas of the seafloor. It will allow us to gather data and to interrogate the many processes that occur in the deep ocean for a period of uh, about 30 years. The information flowing back to us will be stored in a data bank for which Canada will be primarily responsible. And this in turn will allow researchers to ask new questions. It will provide a huge resource for educators and public outreach and it will help in the development of uh, important public policy, for example, like managing our fisheries. Leading the way to Neptune are the smaller Mars and Venus networks. Using powered fiber optic cables and sensors, they will test and establish the working principles of Neptune. All three networks will employ autonomous underwater vehicles, which will explore and sample the ocean floor and water column unfettered by cables from the surface. These robots will gather and relay data on tsunamis, storms, fish migrations, and other events as they happen. Neptune's most significant contribution will be to make the last frontier on Earth, the deep sea, accessible to a global community of scientists, educators, and the general public. Together, we'll explore and hopefully answer questions like, how do marine mammals function in their own native habitat? And how do volcanoes support life without sunlight? Microbes within some of those volcanoes harbor enzymes that have potentially powerful industrial and pharmaceutical uses. It's my opinion that Neptune will launch an entire new era of exploration on our planet. Neptune promises to revolutionize ocean science, a promise that would not be possible without the financial support of the CFI, and the BC Knowledge Development Fund. With a lifetime in excess of 30 years, Neptune will provide Canadian researchers and their international partners an unprecedented and continuous window on Earth's vast and mysterious deep sea frontier. <laughs>